MNS Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we linger on the mountain of God, Mount Horeb. Come with me once again to Exodus. The chapter is 3 and we are looking at verse 7 in the Amplified Version. It reads as follows. And the Lord said, Surely I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters and oppressors. I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we pray. Let us spend a moment together in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, Thank you, dear Lord, for being a God who sees, hears, and knows our whereabouts, knows what we are going through, and a God above all who is concerned about your children. Dear Lord, be with us as we consider your word and go into this week. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, Amen and Amen. My dear friends, just five points to carry you throughout the week from Monday through up to Friday. At point number one, I want to share this assurance with you and say we serve a God who hears. We serve a God who sees. We serve a God who knows. And at point number one, we serve a God who sees. A God who is concerned about what happens to us. A God who takes notice, who is particular as well as peculiar. He is a God who sees those very things that concern us, especially those things that cause us pain, the afflictions that we go through. God takes note. God is aware. God is a person who is not sleeping on the wheel. He is taking note and his vision is not impaired by distance. Even though he is all the way out there in heaven, God sees his children wherever they are. His vision is not impaired even by light because I believe it is dim all the way from heaven to earth, but God's eye sees us. Doesn't the psalmist say he sees us even when we are in the deepest of the seas? He sees us even when we are in the caves. He sees us wherever we are. God sees as he sees. This is an assurance and a caution as well. Whatever we shall go into this week, the transactions we're going to enter, God sees them. The deals we're going to close, God will be seeing. And not only seeing, but recording with terrible exactness as the angels minister unto our protection. They see and report to heaven every single minute, every single millisecond. But let's leave that one aside. That is not our concern. God goes on to say to Moses at point number two, I do not only see, but I see the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. Draw confidence. God even sees Africa. As he sees Africa, he says, beyond seeing, I identify certain people as belonging to me. These are my people. Who are my people? The economic refugees who find themselves in Egypt having migrated from Israel on account of a famine that has struck the land 400 years earlier. It has been four centuries. These, by all means, must be Egyptians by birth, and they are Egyptians by birth and aliens. I believe their papers must have indicated these are aliens, even though they've been born in Egypt, they are not natives of the country. Because they are not natives, they have become afflicted. They have become segregated. They have become discriminated. They have become enslaved because they are not natives of the land. They do not hold the documentation that makes them enjoy the same rights as the natives. May I talk to somebody and say, even though you may find yourself as an economic refugee in a foreign country, you are still a child of God. Never look down upon yourself. Never lose hope. You still belong to our Heavenly Father. He loves you and he identifies with you. Should you be in a country of your birth, you are a native, you enjoy all the rights that you can enjoy. Hey-ho, take note. 
That very person who is not documented, I mean the ones who just fill up the old queues by the immigration offices, those people are people of God, children of our Heavenly Father. And point number three, not only are they children of our Heavenly Father, God goes on to say, I have heard their cry. I have heard their cry. Why? Because they are his people. Why? Because they are his children. And take note, even though there may be people who are border jumpers, they are not documented. You will find them in South Africa. You will find them in Botswana. You will find a few of them in, in Zimbabwe. A couple of them in America have always watched the news with interest, knowing that there are people who want to jump the Mexican border all the way to America. It is not unique to any country. The border jumpers are there. Some are jumping all the way to Italy from Africa. And even as they get there, we think these people are a nuisance. These people are police or a people of no fixed abroad. They are people we would rather not have in our countries. Even then, verse 7 reminds us, they are my people. They are my people. They may not have all the documentation, but as far as I'm concerned, I know them. They are mine. They are mine. Do nothing that is averse to them. Do them no harm, because to do so is to touch and poke the very apple of God's eye. At point number four, he says, not only have I identified them as my people, but I've also identified that they are oppressors. They are taskmasters. These people who are taskmasters and oppressors over my children do not think I'm not watching. I know you. I have identified you. I see you and I hear you when you speak to them. I hear how you speak to my children. And hey ho, you taskmasters, you oppressors, you who cause these my children grief. Take note. Let no prayer be uttered and your name be mentioned there. Let nobody open and end their prayer with a God deliver us from Mr. MK. Let there be no oppression over those who are subordinate to you. They may be the maids in your homes. They may be the caretakers of your gardens. They may be the people who are working on your cars. People who are reporting to you at work. Do not be the cause of their strife. Do not be the cause of their pain, for the Lord is watching and the Lord hears. The Lord is concerned and over and above that, not only does he see, not only does he hear, not only does he even take note, he knows. He knows. There are three things that God wants to speak to and he has impressed upon my mind to share them with you. At point number one, he says, I know your sorrows. There's a difference between pain and sorrow. Pain is a jolt that passes. It's fleeting. Sorrow lingers. When the pain is gone, what remains is sorrow. Sorrow is that thing that even when we have forgotten why things are not in place, we still do not remain our same. You still feel like this is not me. That is sorrow. It is heavy. It is a sadness that is enduring and darkening. Someone's countenance is immediately darkened, like Nehemiah, who walked over and the king said, why is your countenance slow? It is a pain that is deep down. And God says, those very things that you cannot say, those very things that you cannot share with anyone, I know them. Do not carry them alone. Just in case you're thinking I'm alone, you're contemplating suicide, things are just not working out. God is saying, my child, I know. Talk about it. Yes, but I already know. You are not alone in this thing. And it be. Not only is it an issue of sorrow, the burdens that you carry, you are not carrying them alone. I know your sufferings. Some of us, it is a Monday. We do not even wish to be at work. Why? Because so many are the onerous burdens that are being laid upon us. We are buckling at our knees because of pressure. Why? Because your supervisor will just not give you a break. If it is an assignment, you will get the toughest of them all. If it is a deadline, you will get the shortest lead time. If it is an emergency, you are the one who will be called in. If it is over time, you are the one who is paid last. Such are the burdens that the children of God go through. Some are in the schooling environment, wherever you are, even your children. 
There are some teachers who are giving them a burden. What is that burden that they give them? You know you give it your best, but the marks will always be just above average. You know you have done everything that should be done, but because the systems are turned against you, that is the burden that you carry and you are suffering day in and day out. God says unto you this morning, I know the burdens that you carry. Guess what? I have a burden for you. Mine is lighter. Let's swap. Take mine and give me yours. You don't even need to hand it over to me. Roll, roll, roll your burdens away. Bring them over and I will carry them for you. And at point number three on paragraph number five. Take note. He says, I also know your trials. Some of us have been falsely accused. Some of us are always on the defense. You waking up, you must defend where you are up. You being alive is an accusation already. Why are you alive? You must defend that. You being at work, you must defend why you are employed. You being promoted, you must account and give an excuse why you have been promoted. Some things that we do will never be good enough. We are ever on trial. And God says, I know the trials that you're going through. Some of these trials have made you even come to the brink of asking, does God care? Is God even there? And God says, I know even when you are second guessing my presence, I am with you. Child of God, be of good cheer. I see where you are. I hear when you cry. Above all, I know your status and condition. Be of good cheer. Wait for verse 8 and find out what the Lord has in store for you and I in verse number 8 on Friday. Until then, soldier on and be of good cheer, blessings and peace. Good day.